Uh, good evening, and uh, on behalf of the League of Women Voters of East Shore, I uh, would like to thank you for coming tonight uh, to the council's, town council's uh, candidate forum. First, I want to go back and why do we have so many people running for office? North Brantford has a, a uh, progressive form of government, and it's called council manager. There are nine members on the council of, uh, and a town manager. The, uh, the council is the legislative, financial, and um, executive body with a professional town manager who manages the functions of the town. The town manager is hired by the town council. The term for the council is two years. We have 12 candidate seats seeking a seat on the nine member council. The voters elect those candidates at the same time. The voters are also selecting a mayor and a deputy mayor, which are uh, ceremonial positions. The candidate receiving the highest number of votes becomes the mayor, and the one who receives the second highest becomes the deputy mayor. And uh, so I will now finish my dialogue and turn it over to Elise, who is the Lotus Chair of the Mission of the Thank you, Mary Bigelow. She was chair of the subcommittee that arranged for this candidates forum this evening. And I thank her and the committee members for their work. Our local East Shore League of Women Voters represents Branford, North Branford, Guilford, Madison, and we have members from other area towns as well. My name is Elise Lowe, I'm from Guilford and I am the voter service chairperson and moderator for this evening's forum. The League is a nonpartisan political organization founded in 1920, whose members are men and women interested in increasing citizen participation in all levels of our government. We neither support nor oppose candidates or political parties, but we do study and support specific political issues. This evening, we will hear from 11 of your 12 town council candidates. Unfortunately, Marie Diamond is ill and not able to be here. The candidates will discuss issues important to North Brantford voters in response to questions submitted by town residents. The candidates drew numbers for their random seating order, and we will rotate the order of who responds first in each instance. Each candidate now has two minutes to make an opening statement, beginning with Mr. Viglione. I want to stand up for this. Hi, uh, my name is Bob Viglione. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm new at this. Uh, I was born in New Haven. Stayed, li I lived in New Haven for a while, then we moved to East Haven uh, when I was nine years old. 1964, I graduated from East Haven High School. 65, 1965 and 1968, I enlisted in the U.S. Navy and spent three years there. 19, when I got out, after I got out of the Navy, uh, 1969, I became a hand and firefighter. And I retired in uh, June of 2000 at the rank of captain. Uh, 1973, we moved to North Brantford and have been, uh, we've been here ever since. 1982, I graduated from South Central Community College with an associate's degree. And I'm now the owner, I'm retired from the fire department, I'm now the owner of the North Brantford Barbershop for the last 15 years, it's over on Route 80. Uh, I'm married to Linda, uh, I have one child and three grandchildren. And that's about it. Thank you. Mr. Candelor. Um, good evening. Um, I'd like to thank the League of Women's Voters of the East Shore and we're putting on tonight's forum and thanks to all my other colleagues and candidates. Um, I'm seeking a fifth term on the town council. Um, in the past 
four years um, working on the council with many of you that are here tonight. Um, you know, we've worked hard on budgets, on um, policy procedures, economic development, and I think right now our one of our biggest goals is the upcoming budget. And I do think we're going to need some careful planning. And um, there's going to be <laughs> it's going to be an interesting two years coming forward. So I look forward to the challenges, and um, I do think with everyone that's sitting here tonight, um, I wish you all the best of luck as well. And I want to thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Hi, my name is Colin Johnson. Some folks here might know me as Pat, which is my nickname. <clears throat> I have lived in North Brantford since uh, 1987, and uh, I uh, live almost in Guilford, on the, on the Guilford line, on, on Clear Lake. Uh, I have a degree in psychology from Clark University and uh, a law degree. I practiced law for about 20 years both in the state of Connecticut and nationally for a uh, manufacturer, and I did mostly litigation. I've tried cases in 11 states besides the state of Connecticut, and I've tried cases in front of the state courts and the, uh, the federal courts. Uh, in, in 2005, I retired from the practice of law, and I took up a job which I enjoyed for 10 years as a as a representative, uh, a technical representative for a company that manufactured laminators and other graphics equipment and uh, retired from there in 2015. Uh, I have had experience in politics both in North Brantford as former chairman of the Do Democratic Town Committee and as a former registrar of voters, but also in the towns of Portland and Madison in both local and presidential uh, politics. Um, with this combination of things, I've seen a lot and experienced a lot and learned a lot. I think that the town of North Brantford faces some, some tough problems in, in the next year or two. I think that uh, we have both the people and the assets to handle those problems competently responsibly and fairly and openly. And I think that's uh, what the Democrats intend to do, and, and, and that's to maintain an open... Thank you. Your time is up. Thank you. Mr. Roman. Uh, hi, folks. I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for um, having us here tonight. Um, my name is uh, Dan Arman. Um, I, this is my third year on town council. I was appointed when Eric Hodgson had to step down. Uh, I, we first moved to North Brantford in 1999 after I graduated with a degree in industrial design. Um, and when we moved here, I wanted to get involved because I want this, I want to be a, a, a part of this community in a positive way. So I became member, a member of the uh, Hazardous Waste and um, Recycling Committee. And um, after serving three years on that, I went to um, economic development. And at the same time, I worked with the Potato and Corn Festival for quite some time. Uh, and then um, now serving on town council, I'm the liaison to economic development. Uh, I do believe that um, this town uh, is looking at some very uh, significant challenges, economically speaking. Uh, on top of the fact that we have the highest uh, bonded long-term debt, uh, debt load per capita uh, in, this, in the region. Uh, on top of that, we're being cut by the state. The state is facing its own challenges. We need to develop a plan and um, in co conjunction with uh, town council and economic development, I think um, that formula can serve us to have a proactive, successful plan for the future. That's pretty much Thank it. Ms. Angeloni. Hi, my name is Rose Angeloni, and I'd also like to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting this event tonight. Um, I 
am a four-term member on the town council. I am seeking my fifth term. I have lived in North Brantford for over 34 years. I'm originally from the state of Wisconsin. Um, I have been very heavily involved in our family business. I have over 25 years of business experience running all facets, um, being involved in all facets of the business, um, especially in the um, accounting field and running the business. Uh, my prior forms of community service, I've been very heavily involved in the Potato and Corn Festival. I have also was very involved in my children's school. I was past president of the Booster Club at the high school for seven years. Um, I was on planning and zoning. I served nine years on the Board of Education. I was also a member of the South Connecticut Region of Government's Planning and Zoning Board. I'm currently married to my husband Frank for over 35 years. We have three children, one grandchild, and another one on the way. Um, our youngest son is also an active member of the U.S. Air Force, which I am very proud of. Um, I'm also the liaison to the Park and Rec Commission and a liaison to the Board of Education. I have been very heavily involved in the town, both um, through the schools and through the town council, and I've learned a lot about the town, and I think I bring a lot of knowledge from my business experience to the to the council, and I am. That's why I'm seeking re-election. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Duty. Hi, I'm Michael Duty. I'm currently serving as the mayor of the town. I've been a member. I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for inviting us here. It's a, a great event, and it shows well as the broad experience that each council member, or each member seeking election, brings to the table. Um, I've been on the council for six terms, three terms as mayor, two terms as deputy mayor. I've been married to my wife Joanne for 38 years. We have two children and two grandchildren. I retired from the North Brantford Police Department after 34 years. I was uh, I'm also the liaison to the uh, North Brantford Fire Department. I have been liaison to the fire department for uh, two terms. Um, basically, our town needs um, good leadership. We have to get through some tough times. We have economic development um, that we're trying to pursue. We just, um, at one of our last council meetings, we hired a realtor um, to, to base, or we sent out a proposal to uh, bring a realtor onto um, one of our boards to basically, um, we have some vacant property and we just want to get an idea of, of the value of that. So we do a lot to try to improve um, our workings with the town and um, see what our property values are. I believe in um, lower taxes, a smaller government. We have a family-owned business. Um, it's been in the family since 1934. And it's a strong contributor to the schools and, and a lot of town activities. Um, my hobbies are, uh, we raised Hereford cattle. Um, a few weeks ago we had a barn fire and we lost our uh, pet goat. Uh, nobody realized, you know, how well that goat was until it, it hit Facebook and everybody basically said we saw that goat all the time. Thank you. Um, for, your time is up. Sorry. Uh, Mr. Zampano. My name is Tom Zampano. Um, almost, almost a lifelong resident. Um, I've been here since about 1963, going through the school systems, uh, as has my uh, my wife of 32 years. We have 32. Or, sorry, we have three uh, <laughs> three, <laughs> three children. Our youngest is a senior in high school, and um, you know I follow I follow our town pretty closely because it, you know. Uh, I, I'm invested here, and, and I pay attention, and, and I want our town to, to prosper. And um, I'm a community volunteer. I help out in the Potato Fest. Um, people have probably see me taking pictures at various sporting events since probably 1999 or around 2000, somewhere in that era, and um, just volunteering my time for the for the sporting events for the children. And um, um, 
you know, I think that I have some time and some some experience. I've got over 30 years of business uh, business experience helping businesses run profitable and safe. Safety is very important. <coughs> and um, uh, and that's about it. Thank you, Mr. Miller. I'm George Miller. I've lived in town for 43 years, and I'm completing my first term on this town council. I ask that you consider voting for the entire Democratic slate of candidates to allow us to continue our efforts toward revitalizing this community. Two years ago, for the first time in a decade, citizens elected a Democratic majority to our town council because we have a shrinking brand list, we inherited uh, a budget deficit two years ago of over a million dollars before we uh, could do a single thing. It didn't take any genius at all to realize that we had to keep a continuous focus on economic health of our town to dig us out of the hole that we started with. One of the very first things we focused on was the restrictions on free speech at town council meetings, and we immediately pushed to end the time limits imposed on citizens' statements by the Republicans. We know you have uh, things to contribute to all our deliberations, and we're fully confident speakers will continue to be uh, self-policing and uh, be reasonable. Democrats brought an end to the narrow vision of economic development the town was following by joining the Shoreline Chamber of Commerce. Democrats brought the town's tax incentive program for growing existing businesses, and this program was immediately embraced by uh, two businesses, and we expect more in the near term. These will strongly impact our tax base. Democrats are open to both development and to community participation in that planning as the upcoming public comments uh, that will be uh, held on Wall Field in two days will show you. Democrats have carefully and openly explored public uh, uh, safety issues in our community, including ambulance issues, fire hose, and of course communications and dispatch. Each and all of these has been in the open and permits good discussion no matter what side you begin on. We're not afraid of discussion. We're unafraid of controversy. We represent everyone. I ask you to vote for the Democratic slate of candidates on George Miller. Thank you. Mr. Fonin? Thank you. I'd like to uh, join my colleagues in thanking the League of Women Voters for sponsoring this forum this evening, and most particularly our own Mary Bigelow, who uh, is a member of the League of Women Voters and was involved in the organization of this evening's event. Uh, my name is Joe Fawnen. I uh, am not a native to North Brantford, but I've lived here since 1977. I've had the pleasure of raising my family here. I have two adult daughters, one of which I've been fortunate enough to keep in the state of Connecticut. The other uh, chose the Pacific Coast, uh, much to my chagrin. My wife, Claudia, is a lifelong resident of North Brantford. She's here this evening. She uh, taught in our school system, in fact, in this very building for much of her career, and retired after 38 years of teaching. Uh, in the 40 or so years that I've lived in this town, I have uh, constantly been involved in both uh, civic and uh, government uh, activities. On the government side, I've been a, a member of the Inland Wetlands Commission. <coughs> I was on the Planning and Zoning Commission for more years than I care to admit to, and I think the last approximately five years of that tenure, I served as chairman of that commission. Uh, on completion of this term in the next couple of weeks, I'll have served 10 years on the town council, and uh, I'm here this evening with the hope that I can convince you that I'm uh, deserving of a, another term of two years. Uh, my focus throughout uh, my tenure on the town council has really been economic development and fiscal responsibility. I'm conscious at all times of the, the cost of running government, the impact it has on our citizens, and I'm ever mindful of trying to contain those costs and make North Brantford a livable, enjoyable community for everybody that is part of it. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out this evening. Mr. Mays. Thank you. <clears throat> I too like to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting tonight, but I also like to thank the audience for showing up and taking time out of your busy schedule to be here tonight. Uh, my name is Vincent Mace. Um, I've been in town since uh, 1984. Um, it's kind of like a dream to me 
Uh, I grew up on the streets of Fairhaven, and then I went to bed one night, like Rip Van Winkle. I woke up, I was married with three kids, living in Northford, Connecticut, in a one family home in the suburbs. And coming from the inner city, and coming from, you know, close houses where they're only 10 feet apart, living out in the suburbs on the neighborhood name was a big change for me. Uh, my wife and I have been together since 1967. She's here tonight. Uh, we, we've been together for 50 years, married for 44 of those 50 years. Uh, I'm one of those Democrats that George asked you to vote for, so I'm new on the town council, so I'm one of the Democrats, keep that in mind. Um, I'd like to say this here, um, I too, uh, when, when I first got involved, when we first moved into town, I worked for the post office, and I was a mailman, a letter carrier, and because of being a federal employee, I couldn't get involved in politics. Um, <clears throat> at the time I entered the post office, I was a high school graduate. Uh, 1977, I started out on a quest, and it took me 26 years to get my law degree and become a lawyer. I retired from the Postal Service in 2005, and I have my own law practice since 2003. So I'd like to bring something new to the town council, a new voice. Uh, I'm a firm believer in, if I'm elected, I work for the voters, I work for the residents. I don't impose my will or my opinion or my voice on what you want. We have the town council meetings, you come, you voice your opinions, I listen to them, and if you're the majority, I vote the way you want me to. So I want to thank you very much. Consider Vincent Mace, Democrat for town council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rose. I'm Al Rose. Um, I don't know how many terms I've served on the town council. I was going to ask the town clerk today. <laughs> um, but I figured it was going to take her too long to count. Mm -hmm. So um, somewhere, I don't know, does anyone else know? Rose, you know, you know that. At least eight. <laughs> uh, eight or nine. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think you're double digit down. So, yeah. Anyway, um, that could be a bad thing, but I could be blamed for things that are going wrong. So, um, but anyway, I'm a partner in two family businesses with my family. One is uh, Rose Orchards and one is Rose Construction. Um, my wife has come here tonight so she can you know, reiterate to me later on how I made a fool out of myself. I've been married to Ruth for 40 years. We have three children. Two of them are in the family business with myself, my brother, and some of his kids. Um, I'm conservative, um, as everybody knows. Um, I uh, you know, do have a lot of business experience because owning two businesses, and, uh, and uh, they're, you know, I, you know, they'd be called a small business, but they do fairly well, and uh, we have to um, be very careful of our own budgets. And uh, when it's uh, when it's your own money that you're spending, just like with our new venture of the winery, um, which is I think one of the businesses George was talking about in town for economic development, taking advantage of the uh, tax deferment program. Um, when that winery is all said and done. Uh, much to my demise, the tax assessor told me it was like another $24,000 in taxes that we'd be responsible for. So, got to drink a lot of wine. Um, and uh, other than that, we all know that the state of the state is in pretty rough shape. They're trying to dump it on the towns. And I think that we need to have myself and the Republican team. Um, so, one quick thing which nobody will be upset with. I thank the candidates. I do it every term. It costs us time, money, and friends to serve on this board. <laughs> and anyone here that doesn't believe me, once they've sat here, agrees with that. Thank you. Bring us back to reality here. All right. Our first question, and every question, is going to be posed to an individual candidate for up to two-minute response. All the other candidates will be offered a 30-second follow-up time to either add information or to rebut what they've heard the first person say. So they understand this, and I will ask the timekeepers to please give a 30-second warning. They don't seem to um, watch for the 15-second. I think that's too close to the end, so I would prefer a 30 second warning on that two minutes. We will start with Mr. Candelora with the first question for two minutes. 
What do you see as the most important problem facing north of Brantford today, and how would you go about fixing it? Well, I believe one of the, you know, first problems would be um, the revenue, our budget. You know, North Brantford is a hard-working community, and we look at the taxes that are collected, and the rate is approximately 98 percent. So people do pay their taxes. And right now, our debt service is dropping from many years of Republicans working hard at keeping a zero tax increase and looking at our debt service. And debt service is something that's very important, and we need to continue to look at debt service, not just the spending. Um, we focused on that, I believe, I don't know, five or six years ago, and we are seeing it today where our debt service is coming down. However, um, you know, it was mentioned about borrowing or bonding money to operate, and that is not the direction we want to go in. Uh, we do need economic development. We do need a plan with economic development. It's great to say economic development, but you need to do it. And Rex, which we've joined, could be a great tool if it's utilized properly. We need to give them direction. Uh, we need to work with our boards and commissions to give them a direction, and streamlining building officials, uh, inland uh, wetlands, um, and make some of these pro processes easier for businesses. So, um, yeah, I, I think if we can start there, it would be a, a really good, a good start for our community. Thank you. Would anyone like to add their own comment to what Mr. Candelor has said? All right. Move on to the next, to Mr. Johnson. What is your primary objective that you would like to see accomplished? I would like to see more emphasis on open government, more community participation, and a feeling of comfort among the citizens that they can come and have their voices heard and not be afraid of being pushed out of or excluded from the entire process. Um, and I think that uh, that will help the members of the council and the various boards and, uh, and, uh, and committees that serve the council and the people to understand all of the points of view from all of the citizens. I don't think enough emphasis has been placed on uh, citizens' involvement, and I think that uh, while we've made some strides, we need to go a lot further. Thank you. Any further follow-up comments from anyone? <coughs> Silent bunch. <laughs> All right, number three to Mr. Arman first. To balance our budget, what services or personnel would you consider cutting? Um, I don't believe the discussion should just be cutting in order to balance our budget. Balancing our budget um, along with our options as a cutting should be a focus on what we can do to draw in revenue, um, what we can do to make our services more efficient, and what we can, while doing that, serve the town, the town and its taxpayers um, and deliver the services that they pay for and they deserve. So I would not want to participate in a one-sided debate over what to cut without having the other half of the discussion being what we can do to increase our revenue, maintain our infrastructure, improve our infrastructure, focus on efficiency, um, and focus on sustainability. I hope I answered your question. Thank you. This is not my question. These are from the, the town residents. Mm -hmm. Right. Anyone else want to? Yeah, I like to echo, I like to echo something to that. Yeah. I agree with Dan. Cutting services in the town of North Brantford uh, would certainly find that people would not want to live here or move here, and people may want to move out. Cutting personnel, uh, you would reduce uh, people into a layoff, which would reduce the purchasing power of our own citizens right here in town. Why would we want to do that? Our job is to increase revenue and increase people, and not people want to come here. So I agree with Dan wholeheartedly. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. This is almost the same question to Ms. Rose 
Angeloni. How would you address the lack of affordable housing for the over 65 population? Sorry, that's not the one I meant, but go ahead. Um, well, I guess we would have to, I would look at to see if there's anything that we could do with possible increasing the, what we now have for the housing authority, which is on Route 139, the houses that are in there, and maybe there is some open space that the town has that we can look at to see once if there's any additional room for us to do that, or if there's a developer coming into town looking at certain areas to build, if some of the area would also be afford that we could put some affordable housing in there or over 55 that is um, different from what Montgomery Village is. A lot of people cannot afford that type of over 55, but if we could do something with the affordable housing. Any other ideas? Any comments? Well, if I will. Yes. There was a little bit of discussion on 1599, for instance, of possibly putting you know, housing there, but you could still have your open space. Um, so my understanding is, too, there's um, another development possibly along Route 80 that uh, may come to fruition with the sewers. And that ties into economic development, getting sewers down Route 80, the amenities that will help draw businesses. Unfortunately, we've almost lost several businesses through the lack of the sewers on Route 80. So if that project comes forward, which council has cleared the way for a sewer hookup, I think that'll um, be a, a definite highlight for the community. Anyone else want to comment? Okay. Question number five to Mr. Duty. We are in a major budget crisis. I think this refers to the state right now. How do you propose that we balance the budget? But that is town. Kind of mixed metaphor here. Well, what happened was um, when our budget went through, we s we tried to make it as even as we could. But there's there's a, a three to five million dollar bill sitting in the state that we're waiting for a decision. Now we're the longest state without, the, without a budget at the state level in the country. So basically, we don't, we don't have an answer yet. We can't balance the budget without an answer. We have ideas on how to do it, um, you know, and we're looking at different avenues, bonding, you know, um, using more of our rainy day funds or our fund balance, you know, to, you know, bring it down to the bare minimum that we can to try to balance our budget without sending out tax bills um, or supplemental tax bills. So we can't, I, I wish we had an answer, but we're not going to have an answer until we figure out what the state is going to do for our budget. So we're, we're, in, we're in that quandary with a lot of other towns in the state of Connecticut. We don't have an answer yet. Anyone else want to comment? Yes, Mr. The, the underlying premise of that question is, what can we do about the state budget? The answer is quite <laughs> simple, nothing. They dictate to us, it's nothing the other way around. On our end, we're the, we're the recipients of their bad news. If it comes about that we actually have a three to five million dollar shortcoming because of the conduct or lack of conduct by the state legislature, I think there's four possibilities we have. We can either increase taxes, cut services, enter into some tax anticipation notes, or dip into our fund balance. None of those are desirable alternatives, and I think all of us would strive to avoid any one of them, or any combination of them, because they're all, to some extent, a death sentence to the town's fiscal abilities going forward. Yes, I like that for something, too. <clears throat> too many voters are blaming the Democrats up in Hartford for the state's budget woes. Uh, if they look over to history, the empirical data shows that in 1990, when Lowell Weicker was the governor, he was Republican turned independent. He ignored the pension funds 
for four years, gave us a state income tax, but failed to fund the pension funds. Then we got Roland, Roland for 10 years. What did he do? He ignored the state pension funds as well. Then we had Jody Ralph for several years. She ignored it too. Now we have a Democratic governor who's saying, wait a minute, I'm going to stop it right here. The buck stops here. Because he's funding the pensions, there's a shortfall, and that's why there's a budget problem. But the budget problem was with the Republicans from 1990 until 2010 when Malloy got into office. And I wish voters would realize that. That's why we're in this dilemma, because the Democrat is saying, I'm going to fund the pensions for all of the state workers, and we're not going to put it into the future. Thank you. Ms. Guerrero? Anyone else? I would like to add to that also. I mean, I think, you know, the town is facing the same situation that the state is because we have, um, we don't have a healthy general fund. Other towns have the luxury of absorbing the cuts that we've been facing, which North Brantford does not have the luxury of doing. So then we're faced with what Joe Fonin so eloquently uh, stated, and that is the truth, but it's all because of years of um, not addressing uh, our revenue. A revenue side. So now it's a very difficult place to be. I'd have to uh, go against that. We do have a healthy budget. Oh, I'm sorry you don't get a second <laughs> comment. <laughs> <laughs> Once around. <laughs> Any other who haven't spoken? Um, yeah, I mean it's nice it's nice to play the um, Clint, uh, blame game here, but when when we're we're short of, of revenue, you have to you have choices to make. You have to make them. We make them in our daily lives. When we look at the checkbook and there's not enough money to pay everything or to pay additional services, what do we do at home? We have to cut some things. Now, I'm not saying that's the ideal situation, but as as um, as Joe Fawn had pointed out, there's various things to take into account. Whether it's you know dipping into the rainy day fund or cutting some services or you know several different things it actually may be a combination of, of everything yes well, I guess I'll weigh in on this as well because people say cut but if you sit down with our budget you'll find that there is a very lean budget we do not have an excess number of employees we do not have uh, departments rolling in wealth we are faced with uh, a threat from, uh, from the state to force each town to uh, fund teachers' pensions that the state negotiated and the state has been responsible for. It has not been the town's responsibility. And putting that on the towns puts us in the hole. But we do not have a, uh, a, a lot of uh, fat in this budget, believe me. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, let's move on. Mr. Zampano first. With cutbacks in funding for paratransportation, what would you do to help supplement seniors' needs for transportation? <clears throat> well, I think um, one thing we can do is, is look at our, uh, possibly our economic development committee and see if there's any funding that can be had from businesses um, that could be one aspect, um, and uh, the other is to look for volunteers throughout the community, um, you know, um, or sit down and go through our various budgets and, and line by line and try to find, to find where we can shift monies to accommodate services that are needed. Thank you. Can Any I? others? We'll Good. start with Mr. Miller. Anyone across the room? May I say something to that? Uh, yes, anyone here? Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Um, I just would like to respond is that, you know, uh, we cannot rely on our economic development uh, committee to do all the heavy lifting around here. Um, you know, I've been advocating for a uh, economic development coordinator and grant writer um, to assist us in gaining the funding that, you know, to offset the expenses of the town that could include in transportation for seniors and a myriad of other uh, needs that we have in town. And it's, you know, and it hasn't happened yet. So, you know, the economic development uh, group, they're, they're an amazing group, full of energy, full of ideas, but we need somebody to be put on staff to do a lot of the work in conjunction with them to do a lot of that heavy, heavy lifting. Anyone else? 
Okay, moving right along. Mr. Miller. From a recent survey done by the North Brantford Senior Center, the predominant pro problems of these people remaining in their homes are transportation and home assistance. What would you do as a council member to recommend to help resolve these problems? Transportation is a, really, a real problem in a community such as this. You're, you are dependent on your uh, automobile, and if you don't have access to an automobile, you're almost stuck, and you can't get out. It's something that exceeds the capacity of this town or any other like town. Uh, there, uh, there is not public transportation here, and the senior, uh, senior center uh, does have a, uh, a bus, which provides some transportation, but the, uh, the town, I can't see uh, being able to solve that problem no matter what I wanted to do. I'm sorry for that, and as I age, I, I realize that as, as well. Anyone else want to chime in? Yeah, I would like to say something. Okay. Mr. Fauna? The one point I would make is that transportation is re really a regional problem. And I suspect the problem that seniors are having, just like anybody else, if transportation is an issue, it's not just getting around town, it's getting around the area, whether it's through a doctor's appointment in Brantford or some other professional they need to get to in New Haven. That responsibility truly is a responsibility of the state of Connecticut. And much like the other responsibilities they shirk, they are responsible for the bus transportation that is everywhere in every city in the state, but it is not in the suburbs. So that question, while it is a good question, I question whether or not it should be addressed to us or to the state of Connecticut. Okay, Mr. Mace. I was, I was along the same lines as Joe. Um, that was one of the reasons why we want somebody for an economic development or a grant writer so they could look into either the state or the federal government to see, okay, does the town of North Brantford on a regional level qualify to have a bus and have a driver uh, and pick up the cost of that? And it was something that's not on the town, it would be on the state or the government. And I, that's where I would agree with Joe. Anyone else? Well, I got to disagree. I mean, creating another line item in our budget that has already been stated that it's very thin. Um, I don't. I don't think creating another line item is the answer. I do believe the Scrog South Central Council Regional Government is a resource. There's two one one services. You know, maybe we should be, you know, reaching out to some of the local businesses that are already taking care of these people and see if they can expand the transportation needs. Maybe even working with the schools. Um, you know, being on this council over these years, I've worked with the Republicans. We put in self insurance um, and a lot of other ideas that have saved the town money and went into a, a great area. Of okay, Tom. <coughs> Anyone else? 30 seconds? All right, moving on to Mr. Fawnen. Number eight, how can the town council assist the senior population to be able to remain in their homes and maintain a good quality of life? Uh, very simple answer, control taxes. The biggest problem I hear from every senior is they live on a fixed income, and that's not an exaggeration. Those of us who have the ability to work and the good fortune to have a job have the prospect for either a raise, a promotion, or if it's not working out of the company we're at, moving on to some other opportunity in the uh, working field. Seniors do not have that opportunity. They are generally living on Social Security, hopefully a small pension if they're fortunate, but those funds are limited. Indeed, they're quite finite. The only way we can assure that we can assist them in remaining in their homes is to control spending with the result being that we hope to control taxes. If we hold down their taxes and they've been able to meet that obligation up to the present time, hopefully they can stay in their homes. That's our primary responsibility. And every time that I have to consider an increase in taxes, that thought haunts me. Thank you. Anyone want to add their own comments? 
Well, I think that's why it's very imperative that the state budget gets passed um, and, and to eliminate the cuts that the governor's putting in to all programs, social programs, economic programs, elderly programs, they're all being affected by the governor's day-to-day -day budget. So a budget has to be passed up there. The Repub Republican budget does not cut a lot of our social programs that the, um, the governor's is holding over our head. Anyone else comment? Yeah, um, the, the state is preparing to cut the car taxes. You know, where's all of that money going to come from? What's going to happen to that? It's simple to just sit here and make that statement. However, <clears throat> when taxes are going to be, car taxes are going to be addressed, how's that kind of revenue going to be made up? That's part of the problem. Any other? Okay. Moving on to Mr. Mace first. What do you think the town should do, should be doing to find sources of waste in our current budget? Well, <laughs> uh, you know, fiscal responsibility, I think that, you know, part of the staff, you know, with the, with the town manager and um, all of the budget items that come before the town council to be voted on. So um, the town council should be able to recognize that we have too much of waste here or too much of something there, and then have the town manager and the staff bring the reports back to us so that we could address what that waste is and whether or not we could do without it. So I think it's, um, it's not up to the, just the town council to just look at something. We have to have the proper staff and the town manager's key role in pointing that out to us. Thank you. Any other comments? I would. Um, unfortunately, a, approximately 60% of the town's budget is the Board of Education. And um, according to state statute, the town council does not have control over the Board of Education budget. We can only allocate the dollar amount to them, and then they have to have it. So I would like to see that we have more open dialogue with the Board of Education so that we can talk about this and see once if there are any areas that can be cut and where we can save some money. Any other comments? Okay, moving on. Mr. Rose. There seem to be a lot of party politics in North Brantford and Connecticut. Are you willing to put partisanship aside and do what is good for the town instead of spending time on we versus them blame games? Okay, so if you, having served a lot of years on the council, I don't know what the percentage is, but I'll bet it's in the high 90% of all council votes are 9-0. Bipartisan, no matter who's in control. So, first of all, once you understand and uh, know what's going on in town instead of getting your information on Facebook, you actually realize that there isn't uh, a lot of bipartisan fighting in town. Um, so, you know, I certainly uh, always do what I feel is right for the town, no matter which party it's with. But again, most of the time the town council agrees on what we're doing. And I just don't see a whole lot of uh, party bickering. And I'm going to separate that from politicking for office. Um, but as far as running the town, um, there's just not a lot of it. Good to hear. Anyone want to counter that or agree? Um, I would like to respond to that, you know, and um, it has been my experience in the past three years that, especially with Councillor Rose, I've always had an open uh, line of communication with him. We've both uh, expressed different views and different ideas that we may or may not dis agree or disagree with, but it's always been productive, and I really do appreciate that. Um, that being said, um, especially lately, um, this body and a lot of people have degraded into a regime of personal attacks and innuendo, which is really the only result is that we then cannot focus on what we are here to do, and that is to focus on the retention of services, the town's uh, sustainability and quality, and providing a positive quality of life for the people. Thank you. 
Anyone else want to make a comment? Yeah, Mr. there's uh, one example that just came up on Facebook was that the Republicans um, basically want to turn the old administration building property into a park. Now, myself and Al and a couple other people had those buildings taken down. We made a motion to have those buildings taken down. It was approved by the town council. Those buildings were taken down, and that was taken down to see what the property would look like, the value of the property, <laughs> what it would be um, as, you know, prospective uh, development property. And um, that was one of the reasons. And the second reason was we got different prices from different people, but we don't have a realtor on, on staff. Okay. Other comments? I like this. There, there have been decisions made over the years that affect us today in a very negative way. There have been decisions on limiting uh, sewers, uh, size of sewers, where sewers are lo uh, located, and each and all of those uh, types of decisions uh, have affected what development we can even attract uh, here. Just the, the very absence of a turning lane on uh, Route 80 from uh, the Tilcon Bridge down to uh, uh, Twin Lakes Road disadvantages uh, this town when you have uh, uh, businesses only on one side. So these are just, uh, visions that we're talking about. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, did you Mr. Have Mason. No, I don't. Um, I'm a I'm a firm believer of the people, by the people, for the people, and <clears throat> I like to the open comments during the town council meetings. I love to listen to the <laughs> residents as they come forward with their opinions, and that's how I cast my votes. I listen to the people that uh, would have elected me, and this is a volunteer group. And uh, I firmly believe in my situation that if there's certainly democracy, if there's an overwhelming majority that people want something to be done, I would vote in their, in their favor. I would be their voice. Thank you. Anyone else who hasn't spoken? All right. Next question to Mr. Biglione first. Do you support adding development close to residential areas? I do if it's done right. I think the, I think the residents should know what's going on before anything is done. You, you can't just build something in someone's backyard without them knowing what's going on. They're, they're worried about their children, they're worried about their families. Getting hurt because of it, it happened to me. It happened to me when I lived in, uh, on Hubbard Road. There was an industrial park built behind my house and nobody had told us about it. Next thing we knew, there was a building going up. And my life was, uh, my life with my family was ruined for uh, three years, three or four years until we were able to sell the house and move out. Uh, it's an awful thing to do to somebody. I had planned on staying there the rest of my life. And when, when that happened, we had, to, we had to leave. I, I think it's done the right way. It's okay. Okay. Other comments? Follow up? Mr. Arnold? I'll add to that, Bob, because I live on Chinsey, so I hear the backup uh, noises from the trucks at 4 o'clock in the morning on a mo Monday morning from that development, so I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm still there, though. <laughs> it's right in back of my house. Yeah. Any other follow up comments? When we talk about development, the biggest uh, issue in the last several years has been uh, bulk propane and th uh, that motivated a lot of uh, members of the community when a bulk propane facility was uh, uh, proposed and it was uh, proposed in a way that did not involve a lot of community involvement or uh, uh, response and that underscores how a lot of citizens view uh, what goes on in this community and that is why we have uh, uh, concentrated on opening up remarks and hearings and uh, welcoming comments right along. Mr. Rose? So I've got a, I just got a comment on this just to not to go against anything anyone said I just want to clear it up to the people in town that 
by state, and Joe will correct me, either law or statute, you know, this body has absolutely nothing to do with zoning. You know, and like with the propane case, um, the same developer years ago not only developed that industrial park, but then he took the other piece of his land and developed the residential area that had the problem with it. So it's really the townspeople should get more involved with the zoning board and learn how zoning works in the town. Because once, you know, once it once it goes on, you're stuck with it. Thank you. Once that map says industrials next to you. Any other comments? All right, seeing none, we'll move on. Mr. Candelora, do you feel that the town should acquire more open space or should these parcels be developed to bring in more tax dollars for the town? Uh, I, don't, I don't believe the town needs to purchase more open space. Um, and we should, yes, look at the open space we have and we are um, you know, getting it back on the tax rolls. Um, and again, these are two-sided questions because there is a process that has to go through, not knowing what business is looking at it. But, you know, I would be in favor of looking at, you know, bringing in businesses, especially if we're going to talk about EDC. I mean, you can't have it both ways, so you need to look at, you know, what business and if it's a fit for the area. EDC being? Economic development. Yeah, sorry. For those viewers yeah. who don't know. Mr. Arman? Um, yes, you know, um, the town, I think, has to focus on what it has control over. And the two parcels of land that it, it has control over that are zoned <coughs> commercial for business are where the town hall is and where 1599 Foxen Boulevard is. Um, and that is why those should be on the table for um, getting them back on the tax rolls. In the rest of the town, like Augur property that we have, um, we cannot develop on that. So then, those properties should be used, you know, for the town's open space. Thank you. Any other comments? Yeah. Years ago, the town purchased the Augur Farm property where the North Brantford Corn and Potato Festival is, with the goal of making that a town center. You know, now it's got a Christmas tree down there that planted for Lila, and you know. Um, that's basically what we strive for when we purchase that property to be in the center of town. Everybody wants a little park or a little this or a little that, but in our present state of economy, we can't afford those. So that, that has to be looked at to be sold to offset maybe a little bit. But once you sell land, remember you can't get it back. More comments? Hello? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's more in the line with the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, Committee. Um, right now, the way they're staffed, they're, they're pretty well versed, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, before they make any moves or any developments, one of the first things they consider is how much open space is allocated for whatever the, the development is going to be. So I would think that as long as we have a strong Planning and Zoning Commission, we should be okay, as far as open space is, is concerned. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Mr. Johnson, how would you enforce more recycling compliance in town buildings, including schools? In, in the town buildings and schools? Including schools. Right. Um, the enforcement of the uh, recycling is, we've gone a long way. We have the public trash pickup in North Brantford, uh, <clears throat> for which we pay, but uh, we've eliminated thousands of trucks running back and forth from different independent contractors picking up the trash. Uh, and we did that many, many years ago. Uh, within the schools, uh, the recycling would be paper, primarily, a uh, certain number, certain amount of soft drinks. Uh, I would think I would restrict the sale of soft drinks in schools anyway because uh, a lot of them are just sugar and, uh, and some of the sugar substitutes which are also turning out to be problematic. Uh, 
but seeing to it that the schools have their scrap paper recycling, recycling boxes in place um, and are taking care of those containers they have to recycle um, can be enforced, but it's a matter of uh, who's in charge in the schools, and, and that would be up to the Board of Education and its employees. Anyone else? Ms. Angela? Um, well, first of all, they do not sell um, soda in the schools. They are not allowed to during school hours. Um, but there is a lot of single stream recycling that does happen in the schools also. The current contract, um, the company that has the current contract has given a lot of the uh, recycling tubs, the single stream, and there's a lot that does go on in the schools. They also have cardboard containers um, where it's just cardboard recycling and the kitchens <coughs> also do a lot of recycling with their big cans and metal and things. And single stream recycling definitely does help in the schools also. Thank you. Just to add to that, um, and Rose is correct because we were, we worked on this, the Republicans, many years ago going to the single stream recycling. And I don't think it's compliance as much as education. We need to educate people more, the kids, the students. And as Rose stated, they have, the schools have worked very well. Um, and we should partner up with the trash collector company that's doing this and, you know, educate more people on the single stream recycling. And our solid, um, our solid, solid waste, hazardous uh, waste recycling, um, people have done a fantastic job in educating the public in cards they send out and reminding people that there is single stream and to make sure that they use it. And, and let me just say that the public should be encouraged to recycle because the recycling um, comes off of the tipping fees from uh, our, that our hauler charges for us. So every time we recycle, it lessens the cost of the trash itself, disposal. And as we go around to uh, various town buildings, uh, including this one, you'll see a nice uh, large container for plastic bags. Uh, when you get 395 pounds of uh, plastic delivered uh, just to this one site, uh, you see that people are willing to uh, uh, recycle, they're happy to uh, make a, an effort to do so, and it pays off uh, for us in uh, our hauling fees, as you, as you heard. Any other comments? All right. I'm going to break with the format and ask each person, starting with the next in line would be Mr. Arman. Each of you take 30 seconds and explain to the audience why you want to be on the town council. Um, it is how I pay um, my community back. I committed to making this world a better place um, than when I started here, and I'm willing to do anything, including serving on town council, to make a positive move one way or another. Thank you. Ms. Angelini? Um, I've been involved in community service and um, giving back to the community through my involvement in the town government. Um, I bring a lot of years of experience in all facets of business and I would like to continue to do that for the people of North Frankfurt. Thank you. Mr. Judy? I've been involved in uh, public service basically my whole adult life and uh, I enjoy it. Um, I strive for it. I enjoy talking to people, getting to know people, um, worked in, in the school systems with my previous employment for a long time with the kid programs. So it, it's part of who I am, is to uh, my community involvement and uh, helping people. Thank you. Mr. Zampano? Um, I enjoy giving back to the community, and I also want to be able to help the community to work together, uh, departments, boards, commissions, and empower the people that have the responsibilities within those boards and commissions and committees to um, fulfill their responsibilities, which helps us all, and all, and so we can all work together. 
and make make uh, North Granville its success. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Miller. Well, at the outset, Councillor Rose pointed out that we serve uh, without compensation and uh, we don't make any friends. And believe me, uh, that's true here. The amount of hours that we put in, I'm, I'm, I know what I do, I know well, what other people do, the amount of hours that it uh, takes to uh, uh, work on, on these problems is uh, enormous. Uh, I have the time, I'm happy to uh, do it. I'm, I enjoy being involved uh, in town, and uh, I have the time to continue, so I'm willing to run. Thank you. Mr. Fauna? Well, I've always believed that giving back is uh, not only an obligation, but a privilege. And it's something I attempted to instill in my children when I was raising them, is that this is a world that has too many takers and not enough people who are willing to step up and contribute to the betterment of society. So my motivation is to attempt to give back something, very little of what I can offer to make North Granford a better community to live in, make the state of Connecticut a stronger state, and make our world a little bit better place to be part of. Thank you. Mr. Mace? Yeah, I too like to give back to the community. I've been in town for you know, almost 34 years, and uh, due to my previous employment, it was difficult to get involved. But I've been involved on the outside in other activities, and I'd like to say this to the people of North Brainford. Um, I have a reputation for getting things done. Uh, all too often I've seen, and in, in the past couple of years I've been involved with the Democratic, is we keep procrastinating and procrastinating and procrastinating, putting things off. I don't like to do that. The buck stops here. Let's get a committee together, let's do the study, let's get it done. If we're not going to do it, don't keep bringing it up meeting after meeting. I'm here to get things done and improve the town of North Brainford. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rose. So I'm here and I agonized over the decision to run again. Um, I thought I had spent a lot of time um, and with a lot going on in my life, I should move on. But it is very hard to get people to step up and run, as both parties will attest to. Um, my family's been here since 1644. We're credited with being the first settlers in town. We have a long history of um, selectmen, legislators, um, you know, so it's my civic duty. Thank you. Mr. Piglione. Uh, helping people in my line of work when I was a fireman for 33 years, uh, I've seen a lot of people suffer. And now that I'm out of that business, and. I have a little barber shop in North Brantford and I see the old timers come in, they can't afford haircuts, they, they don't have money to eat with, they don't have money to buy their medications with, uh, and, and a lot of other, they come with a lot of other problems, things that are going on in the town, and I hear about them. I thought maybe I could help. I'm not a, I'm not a, a politician, but I do have some common sense. Thank you. Mr. Candelar? Um, I just figured I didn't have enough stress in my life, so. <laughs> <laughs> I would balance now. Well, you know, being a lifelong resident and being very fortunate that you know our family has lived here and had two businesses here. Um, you know, my father had always led by example. He gave back, but he gave back quietly. Not a lot of people know what he's done, and so you know, he encouraged us to get involved. And as you know, my brother is a state rep, and you know, I got involved with this like eight years ago, and it's uh, it's rewarding for myself and hopefully you know, other residents and constituents. Thank you. Mr. Johnson. I want to serve on the council for selfish purposes, for selfish reasons. I am a resident of the town of North Brantford. And whatever I can do to make that life here more beautiful, simpler, and better, I want to do. Uh, I have the time now that I'm retired, and so here I am. <coughs> All right, now it's time for closing statements, and each candidate will have two minutes to make their final comments to the public. And ladies first, Ms. Angeloni. Um, I would just like to encourage 
uh, the town residents to get out and vote on November 7th. Um, traditionally, North Brantford, we have had low voter turnout. Um, and so I would encourage everyone to get out to uh, go online. Uh, the Sound did a survey uh, for all the candidates running. I would say get to know your candidates, what they stand for. Uh, this has been a great avenue tonight that you can hear from us. It will be broadcast on TV. I encourage um, everyone to get out and vote. And I would like to bring my knowledge and continue to bring my knowledge both in the business world and the finance world to the town of North Brantford to make this a better place for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Duden. I would like everybody to um, vote on November 7th. Um, we do need your support. We are trying to make our town a better town. We are trying hard to control spending and, and work on that. And as, as everybody realizes, the state budget is a big a thorn in our side. So we need you to call your legislators and make sure they pass a budget. That is what the town of North Brantford really needs. And that is what we're running in office for, to be able to balance that budget, keep life um, simpler here, and hopefully all our residents will enjoy it. Thank you. Mr. Zampano? Um, yeah, so I want to just go over uh, what I repeated, uh, what I said uh, just a few moments ago, and, and I want to get, uh, my, my goal is to get North Brantford working together, um, get the, the various, again, various boards, commissions, and uh, committees working together, and empowering them to be responsible for their responsibilities. And um, you know, and following the, the the town charter, which is designed to keep North Brantford uh, safe and, and out of trouble, basically, it's a guideline. It's it's a playbook, you might call it, and um, it keeps us uh, in line and and responsible. And um, so, that's thank you, Mr. Miller. Democrats are focused on trying to correct more than two decades of Republican leadership that seem to resist modernization. Both private and town properties have deteriorated. Town equipment has no replacement schedule. Development has been narrowly considered using models now more than 50 years out of date. Some examples are sewer installations, which we talked about, cooperation with state highway developments, welcoming new businesses and encouraging the expansion of existing businesses. But the number of families in our town has increased the demographics of our population has changed. The needs for the present and for our future has changed, and old ideas do not prepare us for any of this. Republicans have published a, a platform suggesting they will do now what they've aggressively refused to do for decades. They claim they will promote growth, but their history shows otherwise. They uh, wrote that they will have a town-wide plan for renovation and maintenance, but when public works or fire or police uh, equipment of all types falls apart, Republicans say, live with it. Republicans say no until roofs leak and buildings are falling apart and mold is growing and town property is destroyed. They also say they'll run on uh, transparency. Here's an example of their transparency. Republicans nominate a qualified candidate for a Board of Education seat and the Democrats vote to support their candidate. Democrats nominate a well-known and qualified replacement candidate for a town council seat. Republicans claim a need to investigate his behavior. They vote abstain, abstain, and make the quorum impossible. Business can't get done. Democrats nominate a well-known and qualified candidate for a Board of Education seat. Republicans plan and plot and collude, and they vote pass, 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 just playing games. I encourage uh, voters to again choose a Democratic uh, candidates in this election so we can continue to move forward. Thank you. Mr. Bond. First, I'd like to thank all of my fellow citizens who took the time to come out this evening and view this forum. For those of you who are viewing it on public access television sometime at a later date, thank you for taking the time to inform yourself so that you can be better able to exercise your right to vote 
And by all means, please come out and vote, no matter which way you choose to, on November 7th. I uh, have, uh, over the last 10 years, acted in what I've always believed was the best interest of the town of North Brantford. There have been times, I'm sure, where some of you have been disappointed with decisions I've made or votes I've cast. Uh, I'd like to sit here and apologize for that, but I won't do that. Those votes were made from my conscience in what I believe was the best interest of this town. I will always vote that way. I ask you for your trust and faith, but I can ne never promise you that I will always do exactly as you expect or want me to do. The good bottom line for me is what I believe is in the best interest of North Rainford. Thank you. I hope to see you all on the 7th. Have a great holiday season. Thank you. Mr. Mace. Um, thank you. I, I'd like to thank the visitors, too, and the audience, and also the League of Women Voters. Um, I've been in town for 34 years, and 26 of those 30, 30, 34 years um, has, has been controlled by, by Republicans. And recently, on an <clears throat> expedition to the police department, the building, it's in deplorable conditions. Um, going to visit the fire departments, they're complaining about equipment that they need that they're not getting. So. Um, a lot of these complaints, a lot of these things have been falling on deaf, ear, deaf ears over the past uh, 30 years. And I think it's time that we start doing something about it. Um, our school system, uh, always very well, but they still could use uh, improvement. We need a grant writer. There are grants out there. The governor of Connecticut, he issued what they call the STEEP, S-T-E-A-P, Small Town Economic Assistance Program. That was free money over the past several years that we could have gotten if only we had somebody to write and apply for those grants. And that could have gone to buildings, it could have gone to playgrounds, it could have gone to parks, it could even go to anything. So we need somebody, even on a part-time basis, to start applying for that there. <clears throat> and we talk about safety. We're going to keep the dispatch in North Brantford. I would like to thank all the first responders, the police department, and the fire department. And I know that when trouble is approved, we can rely on our police department and our fire department to readily uh, take care of us and protect us. Again, thank you very much. And please vote the Democratic ticket on November 7th. Thank you. Mr. Rose. So to be polite, I'm just going to say, don't believe everything George says. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going I'm to leave it at that. Um, and, uh, I actually enjoy working with George. Um, but... Um, <coughs> I'm just looking for your support, and we've got some tough times coming. We're all going to blame the state. Um, unfortunately, they're the ones controlling the carrot in front of our nose now. And, uh, you know, um, I always like to look at the bright side. So maybe, as bad as it will be if the state hits us hard, at least we'll be weaned off that money and have gotten through it. Because if it isn't this year, is it going to be next year? And if it is next year, it is going to be the year after. A lot of the surrounding towns, because of their economics, um, don't get anywhere near the state aid that we do for our education system. But you know what? Um, we, can't, we can't rely on it. We can't count on it. And we're going to have to deal with it. And that's why I need the Republican team and maybe George. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, I didn't have to do this. I didn't have to be here today. I didn't have to do any of this. Uh, I see people hurting in town that bothers me. I want to try to help. Uh, that's what I've done my whole life, and I want to keep doing that. So I signed up. And that's, uh, that's what I want to try to do, help the people. Um, yeah, I mean, we are your neighbors, serving neighbors. A lot of us have a vested interest in our town. Um, and just to correct a few things, yeah, we have gotten steep grants over the last several years. Um, so yeah, we have, we are able to get grants. Um, and you know, I enjoyed George Fiction, so <coughs> I thought it was cute. And, <laughs> I uh, hope to get your support and our whole Republican team support uh, you know, in November. And again, I'd like to thank all of you for coming out tonight. Thank you. 
Mr. Johnson. Hi. I thank you for coming. I thank the people who are watching this on TV in a few days uh, for watching. I hope you'll vote for me and the entire Democratic ticket. I think that we stand for openness, competency, reasonableness, involvement of the community, and the real chance for finding solutions to difficult problems by urging that involvement. And so if you'll vote for me, I'll appreciate it very much. Thank you. So, you know, when I think of North Brantford, uh, what is it made up of? Well, it's made up of the volunteer firefighters, the police emergency responders, the teachers, um, the Board of Education, um, and the 15,000 uh, citizens. I want to do um, what it takes to provide for everybody. Uh, sustainability, quality of life, and services. And that's why I'm here. And um, I can only, I can't state what these uh, other Democrats have said any better than they have. So I'll echo what they say and I uh, appreciate everybody's support. It's been a pleasure. Thank you everyone for participating in this forum tonight. Let's hope that you've helped the voters make an informed decision on November 7th when they do go to vote. And I would ask people, if you have a friend or neighbor who needs help getting to the polls, please take them with you when you go. I'd like to thank Totucket TV or North Brantford Public Access, whoever is manning the camera tonight, and they will be rebroadcasting on your Channel 18 Comcast and possibly YouTube and Facebook access as well. Please tell your friends and neighbors about the broadcast so that they can take advantage of what we've all here heard tonight. Thank you so much for coming and good night. Thank you for having us.